Hi, my name is Deb and I'm from the Chester campus. Um, thank you for your time today. Um, I want to talk for a few minutes <clears throat> about relationships in Genesis chapter 22, a famous and an intriguing story um, of a man named Abraham and his son Isaac. The background to the story is that Abraham and his wife Sarah uh, could not have children and this was made them absolutely broken hearted. And they became too old to have children. But at that point, God promised them a son. It really was a miracle. And not only was it there a promise of a son, but God promised that through the son, that future generations of Abraham's family would come to be. We'll soon see how Abraham hung on to that promise and it helped him to be obedient to God. In today's chapter, God makes a request of Abraham to sacrifice Isaac um, as an offering to God. Now, in, many, in modern times, this seems like a bit of an odd request, really. But the thing that we know about Abraham is that he was spoken of in James chapter 2 as being a friend of God. Abraham had an amazing relationship with God and he trusted God implicitly with everything in his life. We also know that Abraham dearly loved Isaac and God acknowledged this. He was long awaited, he was much longed for and he was a promise of the fulfilment of the promise of God to Abraham and to Sarah for their future. But Genesis chapter 2 verse 2, verse two says that God acknowledges Abraham's love for Isaac and he says take your son, your only son who you love. Now this could have led to a conflict for Abraham. Who did he love more? Did he love his son Isaac or did he love God more? It's easy when we uh, wait for something for such a long time or an answer to prayer. Um, it's easy to elevate that above God. And um, it, we must always be mindful to keep God in his rightful place. And that is a big challenge to us all every day. So Abraham and Isaac and some servants went on a journey of three days to where God told Abraham to make the sacrifice. Now we do know that Isaac wasn't a small boy or a baby or a, even a toddler probably. He could reason, he could talk, he was big enough to carry the wood for the altar. And I wonder if Abraham had been an example to Isaac, <clears throat> excuse me, and taken Isaac when he went to sacrifice um, or went to worship God in times gone by. Isaac did know that they needed fire, they needed wood and they needed a sacrifice. And he knew that on this occasion they only had fire and they only had wood. There was no lamb to sacrifice. Could have been a bit of an awkward moment knowing that Abraham knew what the sacrifice was going to be. But Abraham used it as a faith lesson and he assured Isaac that God would provide for them. It's always good when we can use difficult times as an example to those around us of our complete trust in God. How amazing to see the peace that trusting God brings and we can share that with our families, our friends, those we live with, our, our wider community, our colleagues, when we go through difficult or stressful situations. And so they go on and they build the altar and they even get to the point where Isaac is bound and he's laid on the wood ready for the sacrifice to be made. And it's a really close call, but at the last moment an angel comes and he stops Abraham and Isaac's life is saved. A ram is found in the bushes and the, the sacrifice is made. Hebrews 11 verse 19 says that Abraham had such faith in the promise that God had made over his life that he was actually believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead if he killed him as a sacrifice. And I find this absolutely amazing. Abraham didn't have a Bible. Um, he didn't have accounts of other people's faith journeys. He didn't have Hebrews 11, the great chapter of faith to read, to encourage his faith, to know that God would keep his promise. He was simply living with a great relationship with God and that was where his faith comes from. And James chapter 2 talks about how faith with God in God and our relationship with God must be backed up with obedience. James tells us that Abraham was credited with righteousness by God because of his obedience. And we can show our faith to our community with our obedience to God, we can show that we are a people of faith. 
And we can tell people that we go to church, we can tell them we have faith, but to show them in a practical way is a powerful thing. Our faith, our community can be our family, our friends, our neighbours, school mums, footy team mates, anyone we come across in our day that we can model our faith and our trust in God to. So how do we apply all this to ourselves today? Well, we trust God implicitly with our lives, with the promises that he has made over us, that he will keep his promises. And we worship God, thankfully, not with sacrifices. I'm grateful for that. And not just with words, but also by serving those around us in our lives every day. And I'd like to pray for us now and that we will have opportunities to do that and to show the love of God and show the peace of God to those around us. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Thank you for the promises that you have made over our lives. And thank you that you are faithful to keep your promises. And Jesus, we pray that you will just help us through our day and through our lives to trust you and to show those around us the peace that you give when we trust you, when we're going through difficult times and situations. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Thank you. Have a great day.